Hi everybody. It is January 30, 2018. Did anybody watch the State of the Union address? I can't anymore. I cannot watch these people. The pomp and circumstance, the show that is put on for the American people. I don't know. Every year the president gets up and talks about the State of the Union and what they talk about is all of their great accomplishments. And There's no, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say anymore. I really don't. It's so sad to me that we still do have Trump supporters like we had Obama supporters, people really believing that Trump is doing things. And Carol, don't you know that, you know, everything can't be fixed in a day. And Look, I'm just going to go through headlines headlines and maybe read some portions of articles um, that the policies have not changed the agendas continue on the agendas depopulation agenda 2030 uh, all of the wars continue Trump he campaigned he put out his promises and he has not fulfilled those promises just like Obama and then just like Bush, and then just like Clinton, and then just like Bush. And haven't we seen this play before? All right, let's do it. U.S. again supports Al-Qaeda in Syria. Wow, what a surprise. Why are troops training ISIS, Trump's troops training ISIS terrorists? Maybe because it doesn't matter who's in the White House, policies just don't change. Department of Homeland Security expanding operations into more than 70 countries violating travelers and national sovereignty. The United States continues to take over the world. Federal programs are helping local police buy surveillance drones. U.S. to officially send lethal arms to Ukraine. Oh. Well, we have been arming Kiev for years. As markets roar, American poverty soars. As no one was watching, Trump pardoned five megabanks for corruption charges. U.S. gives Israel green light to assassinate Iranian General Soleimani. Soleimani? Ah, I'm so bad with pronunciation of names. Why? I don't know. But yes, U.S., of course, we're going to give Israel the green light. Bomb Iran. Start World War III, please. Secretary of the Interior, public-private partnerships will blanket all public lands. Wow. So Trump's pick for Secretary of the Interior, well, what's he doing? Public-private partnerships? He is pushing Agenda 2030. One year of Trump, border wall. Prototypes sit in desert as border crossings surge to Obama levels. We get very conflicting reports about immigrants coming over the border. You'll see articles that say the highest number of illegal immigrants have been deported under Trump. And then you get articles that say Hmm. Immigrants are surging across the border. Trump nominates racketeer for federal bench. Bench, yes. He's not draining the swamp. He's only making the swamp deeper. Trump signs bill renewing NSA's Internet Surveillance Program. Nothing different there. Pentagon considers sending another 1,000 U.S. troops to Afghanistan. This is in January 22, 2018. Betsy Davos, Common Core is dead. Wow. Okay. Uh, alert the news agencies, Common Core is dead. No, Common Core is still in place. And yes, they come out and they say, we're working on it, Americans. We're working on it. Don't worry. Common Core in place. Nothing has happened. The Trump administration is betraying 40,000 vets. 
suffering from PTSD. President Trump and his Attorney General are moving to restart the failed war on drugs and will be targeting marijuana in areas the states have deemed it legal. Too cowardly to face the consequences of their actions, the dynamic duo of drug deterrence have pawned the responsibility off on federal prosecutors. So, 40,000 veterans who suffer from PTSD and who use cannabis are on edge. Skynet, Pentagon deploys terrorist hunting artificial intelligence. Hmm, Turkey will target U.S. troops if they keep supporting terrorists like ISIS. So, Turkey is not happy with the United States and has called for the United States to stop training ISIS, stop arming ISIS, stop supporting terrorists. Because, you know, terrorists are us. Kind of like toys are us. Terrorists are us. Washington widens the war in Syria by provoking Turkey. Didn't Trump, I don't know, what was, what did he say during that campaign? That he was going to put an end to all of these senseless, endless wars. U.S. Turkish troops head for military showdown in Syria. U.S. forces to remain indefinitely in Syria, illegally. Oh, oh, Trump's team overseeing Wall Street brings in more Goldman Sachs alumni. Ain't that great? After using Goldman Sachs as a punching bag for his campaign, sharply criticizing his political opponents for ties to the investment bank like Ted Cruz, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump has taken unprecedented steps to appoint former Goldman Sachs attorneys and executives to the upper echelons of government. Yes, well, we got a Goldman Sachs as the Secretary of Treasury again. Wow, isn't that magnificent how that Treasury Department, it has had Goldman Sachs running it forever. Oh, even the deputy, the deputy secretary of treasury, Goldman Sachs. Trump is making great use of America's war machine. The wars waged during Obama's tenure have escalated. Trump now increases defense budget 37% above Obama's. Yeah, give Give that money to the military-industrial complex. No, we don't have any other problems. Just give the money to military-industrial complex. $716 billion. I bet by the time Trump leaves office, our military will be getting $1 trillion. And the most oppressive regime on Earth receives nearly $8 billion in U.S. foreign military sales contracts. Contracts. Thank you, Trump. Trump follows through on threat, slashes aid to Palestinians, while increasing aid to Israel. Instead of $3 billion, let's give them $3.75 billion. That's right. Israel, our greatest ally. And Trump loves Israel. America's economy is doing great, and Americans are in such good shape. They don't need any help. Let's put that $75 million into Netanyahu's pocket. Under Trump, U.S. troops in war zones are on the rise. When will Trump supporters in the freedom movement realize they were duped? This is one that I'm going to read some of. This guy, sorry everybody, is absolutely an insider. Just because he was never a politician before he became the president does not mean that he was not an insider. He's very much an insider. Yeah, great friends with the Clintons. Great friends with Wall Street. 
I'm going to use my office to pardon those mega banks for their corruption. So let's see. Some indie and alt outlets saw that Trump was a deceiver from the get-go, but others somehow fell prey to the deception. Some have since abandoned the Trump train, picked themselves up, dusted themselves off, and rejoined the fight for liberty. Four pieces of evidence showing where Trump has displayed authoritarian behavior. The border is turning into a surveillance and police state under the guise of border security and fighting illegal immigration the trump administration has granted the customs and border patrol and the immigration and customs enforcement wide-ranging powers which violate constitutionally guaranteed protections for everyone you see border agents getting on buses in florida in maine where are your papers so all of the hoopla coming out of Trump's mouth about how we have to protect our borders, it may very well have been a ruse to deprive us of more of our constitutional rights. You can't trust any of these people. It's not about catching illegal immigrants, but establishing a biometric wall with facial and retina scanning for all people leaving and entering armed surveillance towers, automatic license plate readers, which I just posted a video and included in that video was, hey, now our um, law enforcement are surveilling our license plates and without a warrant they are taking data from whatever it is that we are doing via our license plates without a warrant and handing it over to our government the Trump administration is already facing lawsuits over their use of secretive handheld devices which gather biometric data. Authorities have already been stealing people's phones and laptops. No policies have changed. The Trump administration supports the deep state. Trump was never an anti-establishment candidate. Trump is fighting to save the secretive Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, the FISA courts, and Controversial Section 702. Yes, Trump wants Section 702. He wants those FISA courts. He wants them to remain secret courts. Section 702 of FISA allows the NSA to collect emails, browser history, and chat logs of Americans without a warrant in secret. 702 also allows other agencies like the FBI to search through that data without a warrant, backdoor searches. FISA court is a glaring example of the deep state, a secret court run by secret judges who interpret the law behind closed doors and who refuse to publicly release their findings of their interpretations. Yes, we've got secret courts here in America. And this is very upsetting, detaining an American citizen without trial or a lawyer for over three months. Hey, remember when Obama signed away our due process rights? That now Americans can be detained, detained um, sent anywhere in the world. Family, friends don't get to know. Oh, the person, the detainee, they don't even get the right to know the charges leveled against them. They have no rights to an attorney. Yeah, our Constitution is gone. Gone. But Obama, well, when first he signed that New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, when everybody's just partying hardy and drinking and drunk and no one's paying attention. Obama signs away our due process rights, due process rights. 
it was the National Defense Authorization Act. But then when the heat got a little bit, you know, high and attention was put on that National Defense Authorization Act and what Obama did, he came out and said, don't worry, I'm not going to use it. Leaving every president after him the right to use it. And Trump has used it. An American citizen who is suspected of fighting with ISIS in a secret prison in Iraq has been held for three months without trial, without lawyers, without anything. This is what we were very afraid of that would take place with Obama signing away our due process rights. So, Trump comes into office and he detains an American citizen without giving that citizen any rights. Scary stuff, guys. So, this citizen who has been detained for three months has not been charged because there is a lack of evidence. A federal judge recently ruled that the man must be given access to a lawyer. Trump administration is continuing and expanding drone kill list. Trump is actually extending, extending a secret program started by the Obama administration, which allows for the assassination of American citizens. The secret kill list. Trump's right on it. And in fact, Trump has really shown remarkable skill at killing innocent civilians. He's outdone Obama in his first year. Amazing. Increased the amount of airstrikes in his first year, leading to more civilian deaths than during the Obama administration. Trump is definitely the new drone king. The policies have remained the same. When your entire country has been infested by the swamp, there is no possible way of draining the swamp. When you see the guy in the White House following the same policies as the president before, all the presidents before, then you are unfortunately under a delusion thinking that this president is somehow going to save the day. And I have to say that it's just like the Obama supporters during the eight years refusing to acknowledge that he was following the same policies of Bush and Cheney steering this country more and more towards utter destruction. I'm sorry I know that a lot of you get upset when I say this, but I think you want to hold on to the idea that Trump is going to save the day because perhaps you don't want to do anything in your own communities. You are the only one who will save the day. The only way change will ever manifest is if you change. Unfortunately, we need the you in the aggregate to change. We are so thoroughly corrupt. We have become a very sick, twisted nation with people like this leading. There are leaders. Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters. I came across 
this in, uh, it was on Drudge today. Maxine Waters set to respond to Trump after State of the Union. Maxine Waters is a truly twisted, sick, the Democrat, the Democrats, I, I, I'm astounded that anybody with any working brain cell and any moral core within them could could have any self-respect applauding these people, defending these people, cheerleading for these people. It is truly just, it's a disgrace, but it's so sad to see how demoralized Americans have become when it is so obvious that these people do not represent them at all. They have no leaders. These people, how long has Maxine Waters been in office? 40 years or something like that? And she has, just like so many of them, enriched her own wealth. She is truly a despicable disgrace of a human being. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm horrified, horrified. I'd be horrified if even one American could look at this woman with, with any kind of respectful eye, have any feeling of respect towards this woman. August 2017. Was it August? This is August. Maxine Waters charged with ethics violations again. Does it really matter how many videos if I posted on, let's say, Diane Feinstein and her ethics violations and these people are still in office? Americans have lost their own self-respect and it is so heartbreaking to just live this day after day. It's so obvious now, though. That's what is so sad. It is so obvious that these people are so twisted, so corrupt, no moral core whatsoever. They're all about themselves. And people still put these people on a pedestal. Maxine Waters Ethics violations again. Ethics violations in 2012. Renowned for abusing her power to enrich her family. And the Democrat Party puts her on, I, I don't think she is still on uh, the Banking Committee. The House Ethics Committee investigated Maxine Waters for steering $12 million dollars in federal bailout funds to a failing Massachusetts bank in which she and her board member husband held shares. Skirted federal election rules with a shady fundraising gimmick that allows her to receive unlimited amounts, unlimited amounts of donations from certain contributors and she's raked in hundreds of thousands of dollars in short periods of time by selling her endorsement. Who, who could possibly want to be endorsed by Maxine Waters? But that's how sick and twisted we are here in the swamp. She collected 45000 for each endorsement. She has made worldwide headlines for her frequent trips to communist Cuba to visit her friend who, in 1979, was convicted of murdering a New Jersey state trooper. She got a life sentence, and with the help of fellow cult members, she escaped from jail, fled to Cuba, and Maxine Waters has frequent trips to visit a woman who murdered a New Jersey State Trooper. 
a, a woman who escaped from jail. These are our quote-unquote leaders. She has a 4.5 million, 4.5 million, not 4.3, 4.5 million dollar mansion. It is 6,000 square feet in an affluent white neighborhood in Los Angeles. Impeach 45, impeach 45, impeach 45. He's a racist, he's a racist. Maxine Waters does not even live in the district with her constituents that she represents. She lives in a white neighborhood, an affluent white neighborhood, and she's the race card queen. It's not going to be Trump. It's not going to be Maxine Waters. It's not going to be Nancy Pelosi. It's not going to be Hillary Clinton. It's not going to be any of these people who change the direction of this country. It will only come down to, I'm sorry to say, yes, you must change. You've got to get active in your community. And if you are not active in your community, do not expect any change. Expect everything to get worse.